for clickbait headlines. <laughs> oh my god, Jesus. Firkin. Smog. And there. touch buds. Welcome to another episode of Velocity Kill. Coming to you at the speed of sound, we are on the air at the Hexapod Soundhouse in Cleveland, Ohio. We are here for the 84th episode of the Velocity Chaos Podcast, and we are so stoked to be here. And by we, I mean me and my co-host, Luke. That's me. Hi. Thank you guys for coming and enjoying this. Hopefully you enjoy it. I just want to one, two, three, introduce you to DJ Four Chords. Hey, what's going on, guys? Glad to be out here today, jamming it up. Oh, we're glad that you're here with us. Uh, Nick, what do we got going on today? Ooh, we're doing some party knowledge just to make sure that you're all loaded up for uh, these fall gatherings you'll be headed to. We're going to do some clickbait headlines. We're going to click through the internet a little bit and uh, have some fun making fun of that. Uh, and then we're going to do what do you think it means? We're going to explore a word and its meaning and what it uh, and what its purpose is for us, really. How we're going to use it in everyday life from here on out. But before we get into the show, just a reminder to our returning listeners and a note for our new friends. Here at the Velocity Chaos Podcast, we explore the highest heights of human knowledge and the lowest depths of crude humor. Our mission is to tickle that pink thing between your ears and poke that frontal lobe and sometimes just smash the laugh box. So hop in and buckle up for an infotainment ride across the airwaves. But before we get into all that, just a reminder to follow us on Instagram at Velocity Chaos Pod and on Facebook. Also, drop us some stars on Apple Podcasts, some love on the Spotify, and toss us a stub on YouTube where you can watch us. But thank you guys always, as always, for your support. All right, Luke. Uh, just looking forward to getting, you know, making a connection. We're going to make a connection. We're going to get our brains linked up. Guys, before every show, we just do a word association, and it just uh, helps us, uh, one, get in the mood, get in the spirit of Lossy Chaos podcast, but also to get the juices flowing. So uh, DJ Four Chords is going to roll some dice to give us a little bit of a challenge here. Yeah, and that'll be the amount of turns that we have to connect two words uh, from one end to the other. Luke and I are going to uh, volley back and forth. If you're listening at home or if you're watching uh, on YouTube, please join in. Uh, some of our listeners are becoming experts at uh, uh, linking words together, and they are shaming us uh, privately and publicly for not doing it as well as them. So here we go. Let's give it a shot. We'll do our best. All right, fellas. What's the time for you to put them to shame? Because we got the two D6s. Ooh. Ooh. We got a one <laughs> and a four. Oh, a five. Man. A five. Okay. man, we're hitting sub sixes every time. Drumsticks to zip lining. Drumsticks to zip Sorry, did I steal your thunder? You stole my thunder. I'm sorry. You wrote it in here. Next time, I will not look. Listen, bro. Uh, we got to connect drumsticks to zip lining. <laughs> or actually, no. Tell us what our words are. All right. So we got lava lamps and roller coaster. No. <laughs> oh, man, I had it all figured out. No, I don't know what I'm going to do. <laughs> I'd All right. like you to make the connection between drumsticks and zip lining. Zip. Okay, cool. So uh, I will feed Luke the first word, and then that won't count, and then we're into counting, and we got to connect. got a handful okay. of guesses. Ready? I mean, volleys. Not counting the first word. Yeah. Drumsticks. Rhythm. Music. Dancing. <laughs> treetops, <laughs> treetop dancing in treetop, <laughs> zip lining. <laughs> All right, uh, just left turn to left turn, left turn to right turn. All right, we got it. Got uh, right. <laughs> I thought you were going chords. I was like, someone's going chords. Come on. Yeah. Oh yeah, music oh, wow, chords. Man. Yeah, primed and ready. Yeah, drumsticks. <laughs> <laughs> that's my bad. Dancing. My bad. I just like dancing to zip lining. Uh. That's, that's all my fault. Oh, uh, I wish I knew more about that situation, and I wish I had it ready. But uh, you know, I want to. I want to get some party knowledge out there for this topic right now. Fog. <laughs> you guys, you guys know about fog? I know it happens. It happens. <laughs> Say my brains in it all the time. That's right. 
That's what I want to talk about. Brain fog. No. Brain fog. Actual. I think it's one of my favorite phenomena, like natural phenomena. Okay. Phenomena. Yeah. Do, 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 do. <laughs> <laughs> phenomena. Do, 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 do. <laughs> um, no, I think, yeah, like weather events. I, I, fog is just so cool. I don't, I don't yeah. know how you guys deal with it. No, I think it. I mean, yeah, I, I thought you were rolling with it, but I, I agree with you. I think it's. Uh, are we going to define? Because one big issue for me is defining the difference between fog and mist. Whoa. It's going to be in here. Oh Whoa. yes, good, good. <laughs> finally, finally, yeah. I, you will unlock me. It from wasn't suffering. a good definition, but it was in here. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'll just jump right out to that. So it was like fog is uh, reduces visibility to one kilometer, whereas mist. Is uh, anything between one and two kilometers? It's like what? That's, so it's conversion. Yeah, way more than seven feet. If yeah, you can't exactly. see seven feet in front of your car. It doesn't matter what you're in. You gotta slow down. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. So fog. It's a cloud. It's a cloud that touches the ground. Fog can be thick or thin. Many people have difficulty seeing through it. And then here, I found a little. Uh, wait, 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 wait. Back it up. You said many people have difficulties. No meaning. Oh, yeah. Sorry. I thought you said many people have. I possibly did. <laughs> Which is like. It's very possible. There's just people many. out there who are like, yeah, fog. Yeah, many people have don't uh, care. Don't, don't difficulty me. seeing. Fog. Meaning people have difficulty okay. seeing through it. And here I found this uh, this sentence that uh, maybe we can also dissect in this party knowledge segment of fog. In some conditions, fog can be so thick that it makes passing cars. That's Wait. the sentence in here. <laughs> <That's>, <laughs> Thank you, Nat Geo. <laughs> <laughs> wow. They need to get their editor. Fog can be so thick. That it makes passing cars. <laughs> <laughs> Come out. Yeah, I guess maybe it just it makes it. I, so, want, I want Morgan Freeman to be reading that. And just be like, <laughs> what? Paul can be so different. It makes passing cars. <laughs> <laughs> Who wrote this motherfucker? <laughs> Even monuments like the London Bridge in London, England. <laughs> or the Golden Gate Bridge in San Francisco. No, okay. <laughs> That's so, Cleveland, right? Yeah, yeah, that's the best That's I so got. good. <laughs> Um, so it's all uh, impossible to see. The fog shows up when water vapor or water in its gaseous form yep. in the vapor, it condenses. Uh, during the condensation, water molecules or molecules of water vapor combine to make tiny liquid uh, water droplets that hang in the air. So this is like defying gravity, which clouds, they amaze me in the first place. Sure, yeah. In the begin with, like, the, <laughs> well, how are they doing that up there? Because I mean, water, water is all over the ground. It's, it's heavier than gravity or whatever. Heavier than gravity. Heavier than air. How's it how's it just hanging out? <laughs> I hope somebody yeah. just repeats what you're saying verbatim at yeah. a party. No, it's like, yeah, no, like gravity, like it's amazing. Water. It blows my mind. It's Everyone's like gravity. Yeah, dude. <laughs> this is party knowledge when you're a few few chilly ones deep. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You'll self edit and you'll be yeah. fine. You'll just pick up the big notes. It's a cloud that touches the ground. It's water vapor. One kilometer is a fog. Right. Two more than one kilometer is mist. It's mist, yeah. So you know you know that that business. So um, you know we know water vapor is invisible when it's when it's uh, when it's normally by itself, but then it humidity. The, yeah, when you when it attaches onto things, so it has to attach onto Particul other part other particles exactly yeah. particulates. Yeah. So um, depending on the humidity and temperature, the fog can form very suddenly and disappear just as quickly. This is called a flash fog. Flash fog. Flash fogs are happening. Flash fog. Here, here we go. <laughs> oh, whoa! Hey, hey, I man. can't see for one kilometer now. <laughs> Glad that didn't attach to any of our particulates. <laughs> yeah. Here we go. I got. I, here's the facts on the mist. Fog is not the same thing as mist. Fog is denser than mist, so it's a Dense. density thing. Okay. The denser brother. Yeah. So this means fog is more massive and thicker than mist. So. Mm. When she's just like, man, you're like a miss. And you're like, babe, no, I'm fog. I'm fog. <laughs> I'm, I'm much thicker fog. and more massive than a mist ever could be. So uh, does that mean that dusty days or things like that where it kicks up a lot of particulate, that helps fog to form? Yes. Pollen, maybe. So during yeah. pollination season. Yeah. What about like in smoggy cities? This guy, this guy, he's got the oh quest. I love it. I <laughs> love it. Goods. So, so when someone's firing these questions at you at the party, yeah, you know, you're bada 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 good. Oh, yeah, do what do I got in the store for you? So, this I'm like all, that preppy guy with yeah. like the sweater like tied around his neck, just like, what about smoggy cities? <laughs> and you go, well, there are several different types of fog, including radiation fog, advection fog, valley fog, freezing fog. I need to go what? fill up my Long Island iced tea again. Right. <laughs> Before you go any further with this list. And 
Here's your here's your uh, smog, P super. No, P super. What? That's a real. That's that's <laughs> what they were calling it. Do the Morgan Freeman thing. <laughs> Why did they call this P soup? <laughs> Is it P soup? P soup? P super. <laughs> Andy Dufresne wants to do very deep P super. <laughs> Oh yeah. Jesus! He was at the pea soup. In oh, <laughs> it's in here somewhere. I'll get to it. It's um. So what happens with the pea super is because it's a smog. You got the the smog coming from the, the industrial cities. Okay. And the fog attaches to it. You got the smoke fog. That's why they get smog. Okay. You got the sm in the og. So those attach. <laughs> got it. <laughs> and then because it it's not like a normal white. Color, it's like right, a little dense. dizzy, it it's like, yellowish, ugh. It's brown, brownish, it's only duked in a cloud. That's <laughs> why they call it the pea super. Ah, the pea super. Pea super is the type of fog that forms when water condenses around microscopic particles of coal. This fog is often brownish yellow, leading to the name pea super. It's common in areas that burn coal for energy. Like the scientists that are just like, guys, we are. <laughs> Let's just keep this through so everyone can relate. <laughs> yeah. They'll never believe us. So let me let me get through these. So you got radiation fog. Yeah, that sounds like the worst fog. Why are we not talking about that? Sounds pretty bad. <laughs> it's not that bad, actually. Okay. So, okay. That's what I was like. First, I was reading, I was like, radiation. That's oof. just, just like we're talking sun. Chernobyl. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just people walking out of it, just zombified. Just is that why the Perry Power Plant over here has always got <laughs> fog around it? <laughs> So radiation fog forms in the evening when heat uh, absorbed by the Earth's surface during the day is radiated into the air. So it's more of like a release of heat. Oh, like on lakes and stuff. Yeah. It's all like creepy. So it creepy it got hot and then the cool air is coming and it's like, ooh, that's nice. Let's all mm. dance in the fog. Mm. So as, as the heat's transferred from the ground to the air, water droplets form. Sometimes people call it ground fog. So got radiation it. fog, ground fog. Radiation fog. <laughs> same, same dose. Ground fog sounds less scary. So I'm going to yeah. go with ground fog. <laughs> Ground fog day. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> no one's made the sequel because no. that's copyrighted somewhere. <laughs> Someone's got that. Advection fog forms when warm, moist air passes over a cool mm. surface. This kind of sounds the same, but the process is called advection. Scientific name describing the movement of a fluid. Uh, in the atmosphere, the fluid is the wind. So not necessarily a fluid, but it's fluid-like mm. that it's, it's uh, you know, causing the advection to happen. So okay. when moist, warm air makes contact with cooler surface air, uh, water vapor condenses to create fog. So it's kind of opposite of radiation, where radiation is uh, hot surface, cool air. Yeah, advection yeah. seems like hot air, cool surface. Okay. So Which one's better? Whatever you want. <laughs> <laughs> whatever is the old deal. So uh, a difference in temperature is what you're saying. That's a, that's yeah. a key here. Very. All right. So this uh, Pacific coast of the United States uh, from Washington, California, covered in advection fog. The cold California current, which runs along the western coast of North America, is much cooler than the warm air along the coast. So got that's, that's where okay. you get that. Then we got valley fog forms in the mountains, usually during winter. Valley fog develops when mountains prevent dense air from escaping. So it holds on. Fog is trapped in the bowl of the valley. In 1930, vapor condensed around particles of air pollution in the Meuse Valley in Belgium. More than 60, 60 people died as a result of this deadly valley fog. I've heard of this. It happened in Pittsburgh one time. I can't remember. It's called a depression yeah. or something. What's mm -hmm. it called? Where like a, like a huge, like very almost like deoxygenated chunk of air just like flows into a valley yeah and it's just very low oxygen you know what i'm talking about and that's yeah that's what i want to get into is the um is uh here's when researching the pea super you have the london fog of 1952 Ooh. that they say killed twelve thousand people are you kidding directly like as a result at first they were like eh, it's about four thousand <laughs> And then Still. after like months and three years, days of walking around, yeah. there's just dead bodies in yeah. apartments. <laughs> yeah, it's like, more like twelve. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Years later, like ah, that was actually more like twelve. <laughs> Ten years later, where they're just like opening up apartments and like, oh, that's where yeah. Charles went. You get up to heaven, like, what you went for, bro? Fog, fog, fog bro, <laughs> fog. <laughs> what you couldn't out that run, run that fog, man? Yo, it's so a fan a on my god. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> fog of death. So yeah. So what happened is you know they have the industrial revolution kind of yeah. airtime. Uh, you know yeah, getting all this coal and this manufacturing that caused all the particulates of the mm. smoke. Yeah. Fog came in, 
held it down there for five days. Oh, wow. Five days, December 5th to December 9th, 1952. Um, just sitting there. It was so thick. They were saying that people couldn't even see their feet. Like, that's wow. how thick it was. They say crime went up because I uh, sure. yeah, can't see anyone. People, but like other people couldn't get home. Sick people couldn't get to hospitals because they couldn't find their oh. way. Whoa. So, yeah, this was just um, just insane amount of polluted fog. And then um, because of this, a good thing came out of it is the uh, Clean Air Act. Um, so that hey, a good thing came from those, uh, you know, 12,000 people. May, may they rest in peace. That's knowing a cool idea. I'm running it down. That was about f- uh, four years that later fun. that they came up with the Clean Air Act. So <laughs> <laughs> when it hit, when it hit ten thousand, yeah. they're like, okay, yeah, we gotta do something. Yeah. <sighs> so, um, but there are good things of fog. I, I did I did find that there are some beneficial things while we wrap this this part okay. up. So what they have are called not dream catchers, fog catchers, fog catchers, fog catchers. So in in some areas where there are not uh, such uh, bodies of fresh water or like rivers or, or like yeah. wells that stay moist. You know? Oh, yeah. I know where you're going with this. Yeah. 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 Okay. Go ahead. So, so what they do is they have these fog catchers, like these big nets, but they're like thin nets. And like in the mornings and some of the seasons, you know, the, the air, the moisture in the air attaches to these nets and they're at these angles and stuff where they just run off and, you know, yep. they can harvest the water. Yeah. And they said sometimes on some days they'll get hundred, like a couple hundred gallons of, of water. Wow. So that's awesome. You should that, be able to do that with like sheepskins. Oh, shoot. Like, yeah, the shepherds would do that to, like, harvest water and put it in their See? teams and stuff. People are amazing, man. Yeah. That's the thing. So sweet. Or they could just not live in these desolate areas. <laughs> You're just out there <laughs> just, true. like, squeegeeing sheep yeah. and just, like... <laughs> yeah, yeah. They're still alive. <laughs> They're like, yeah, yeah. You, yeah, you're not trimming them. You're just... You're like, all right, guys, come on, uh, Daddy Thirsty. <laughs> <laughs> Delicious. Delicious. Mm. Mm, this sheep's really watered down. <laughs> so Bella Vista, Peru, they they rely on fog catchers, is what I found. So they don't fog have ri- catchers. rivers or lakes or glaciers nearby. The wells dry up quick. Um in two thousand six said they invested in a series of fog catchers. Now the residents residents of Bella Vista have enough water to irrigate trees and gardens and provide their own drinking uh water and hygiene needs uh with that. So that's amazing. Yeah. Let's. I want to see. I can't find it. Never mind. I was gonna. Say, I I thought it was like a hundred or you know. It said like a couple hundred gallons. That's amazing. Um, even know. if it was one gallon. Yeah. yeah. That you're just snatching out just of the air, pouring the it air. in a bucket, and making a a nice spritzled water. Just throw some carbonation in it. Yeah. But there you go. So I mean. So you know, tied sweater guy's back. Yeah. And he's like, "What you got? So which movie is scarier, the fog or the mist?" Obviously, the fog. <laughs> okay. It's uh, you never hear the the great London mist of 1952. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, I've been misted. <laughs> it's, that's like you're standing in line at uh, Cedar Point, and then you got the fans blowing with the little yeah. water uh, droplets. You can definitely yeah. see more than a kilometer in that. Fog is scary, though. Yeah. A really quick anecdote. I have to tell it. It's so funny. I read Stephen King's The Mist uh, in high school. My buddy read at the same time, and we like finished it. Uh, we weren't nerds. We just finished it like the week that we had like a, a, a hangover. Like we, we not a hangover. We sl- uh, stayed at his house overnight, right? Uh-huh. And sleep we a sleepover. Yeah, it's so weird saying it when you're older. <laughs> but uh, no, we we um got up the next morning and it was just this huge mist like because we had watched the movie too that night. Oh. And so like we woke up and like, I was like going to the car. Uh, I'm gonna hang out a couple more hours. <laughs> Just stay at your house until it's noon, and the mist. I feel away. the sun on my face when I'm driving home. Yeah, <laughs> I'd prefer not to be eaten by like interdimensional monsters in the mist. <laughs> uh, anyway, I mean that was a good story, but you know what's a really good story, uh, or has one in it? Book, yes, book. Book has so many wonderful characters, so many wonderful themes, so many wonderful moments, so many wonderful words. Book takes you on a wild journey of experiences that so many people can relate to. Reading book will open your eyes to so many life events of the main character and all the main characters, eccentric and unique associates. Book is a real page turner and take it from me, someone who can't read good, reading book was really something. It was quite the magical experience. If you want to get your hands on book, go to the website and use the code VCPOD20 at checkout for your 
first 20 pages of book free when you purchase book. If you don't use VC pod 20, then they will rip out the first 20 pages before they send you the book. So just use the code. This is not an actual product service idea. Just in case you thought it was, it's not. If there is something out there with the same name, we are unaware and have no affiliation and offer no judgment on the actual product service idea. I love that one. I love it. So it's nice. I, I've achieved something. It was very life. foggy. <laughs> very, yeah, very foggy. It was like liquid air. Foggy, foggy, foggy. Um, yeah. So we are going to get into some clickbait headlines. Uh, w- you know, we took the work out of it. You guys don't have to doom scroll. You guys don't have to worry about, you know, checking around. We went and found some clickbait headlines for you. So that will take some time out of your day to enjoy it with us. Essentially what I did, I just found five um, headlines that I like in interesting kind of weird stories. And I just maybe tweaked the headline a little bit yeah. to fit our show and uh we'll do a quick round of guesses just to see what you guys think and then we'll just like chat through what happened yeah Ooh, fun so first one up here we go stout little guy likes to bounce ah uh, i read this one actually did you really yeah so it's it was um it's like a a guy that's not very tall he's he's like maybe pushing five feet so he's legally um shorter than uh He's, he's I guess dwarfism, but he's like a bodybuilder. <laughs> okay. And uh, he just likes to bounce. Like he's, Peter yeah, he's like a buff guy. Like, hey, man. You can't. And he's like, he's Call like, Call me a, elf one more time. Yeah, yeah, exactly. He's like a bowling ball. Like, just, he's just okay. ripped, but very, very round and stout. Yeah. yeah. Okay. DJ Four Chords, what do you think? Yeah, this is going to be about like a Joey, like a little, little kangaroo. <laughs> You know, but he's just, he's, you know, I mean, sticking with the stout. That or he's probably drinking stout. He's got like a six pack of stout in his little kangaroo pouch. <laughs> he's just bouncing around because he's all drunk up, Joey style. Yeah. Good guess. Good guess. Uh, drunked up. <laughs> he's got like just like fosters <laughs> like in his pouch. Just like, uh, you want to brew? Like, he's, <laughs> he's confused. He's got a bunch of Guinness. Yeah, he's, yeah. He's Where like am stout, I? A stout little guy. That's he's a in, logger. <laughs> in the Dublin Zoo. Just, <laughs> yeah. Uh, Close. DJ Four Chords was closer because he had the animal component in okay. it. Yeah. So Sick. a stout or a stoat, mm. as some people call him, was jumping around on a trampoline. Oh. And somebody caught it on video on one of their little like backdoor cameras. And uh, this little guy was just having the time of his life. The, the little trampoline. It must have been like one of those little exercise trampolines. And uh, he just comes running out of the out of the darkness in his backyard, jumps up on the trampoline, and is like doing just like kid stuff, like rolling around, doing little somersaults. And uh, it's just uh, this is something that's always interesting to me and kind of cute when like animals discover and play on something that like humans have made because so much of what we make ends up being <laughs> deadly to them. Yeah, that it's nice to see him. Uh, Enjoying himself a little bit. It's just pure fun. Yeah, he's I just going it. for it too. <laughs> he was just that's good. He was having a good time with that yeah. one. That's yeah. Like you, there's videos like foxes or something like jumping yeah. on trampolines and stuff, or even dogs. Yeah. Like, but it's it's. I think it's cooler to see wild animals uh, discover yeah. it. And, that's uh, true. Yeah, that that's just good pure fun. Where I, I've never seen a, a, a stout astute. A stout. I've never seen a stout in the wild. It looks like a weasel. Like They're a, all in the same family. Yeah. They're more of a Eurasian, uh. <laughs> <laughs> probably. Uh, I, the funny thing is, though, you see this little guy just like having a good time. That's how I act on trampolines. Mm-hmm. Just like this is a unique experience. Five minutes later, okay, I'm done. Yeah, <laughs> like I get me off. That <laughs> yeah, was good. And then I see those kids, those teenagers in their backyard, like their parents got them like an industrial sized trampoline, you know. And they're like thirty yeah. feet in the air, and I'm, I'm like, "What is going on?" Like, I thought I was hardcore when you get the the snowboard out there in the backyard. <laughs> you're like doing like you know 1080 the N64 video game. You're like, "Look yeah. at this McTwisty, bro!" <laughs> you like land on your back, it's no problem because you're on a trampoline. Yeah. 1080. Yeah, 1080. And you you thought you were so you know so cool, and then you got dudes like literally just double bouncing people, and then they the throw moon. the mat underneath like yeah, like that's gonna stop your neck from breaking. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Unless the thing is made of jello, which yeah. is like, oh, luckily, bloop. <laughs> luckily your neck broke your fall. <laughs> your, neck, your neck broke your fall. Uh, I don't know. Like, it's so funny. It is one of those things you grow out of. Not if really? you're astute. Not if you're astute. I don't know, dude. I'm the grown ass 
grown ass man at the trampoline park going ham. I'm like triple yeah. jumping over kids and stuff. Yeah. I got damn near got thrown out of one of those trampoline parks one day. And the worst part was my friend, she worked there. And she was like, <laughs> she's like, hey, you guys come in for free. I was like, sick. And they're like, get off. Now. <laughs> You're done. Not even 10 minutes in. Those are fun, though. Those oh, yeah, fun. dude. Yeah. I'd, if I was to go out, go out hard, I'm going to be like face first doing yeah. 16 flips into the spring. Let's go. 10 landing. <laughs> yeah. What, uh, uh, have you guys played dodgeball in one of those places? Oh, yeah. Oh, no. Wreck those fun. kids. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I should. love the, the videos of like people doing like a side like a sideways flip and like throwing the ball and hitting like the four year old just like yeah. the kids just like going to pick up another ball and God just yeah. boof. Rick builds character. No, nope, not a hit. He hit his head. He was bending down. He moved his head into it. Come on. This is Bush League. Bush League. Guy just sacrificed his life to make that throw. Yeah, go tell your mom you need another juice box. <laughs> Boom, baby. <laughs> Just smash it right in their face. <laughs> um, all right, all right, all right. Uh, that little dude having fun. Here's another headline for you guys. Doctor Who beats ass. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so this is, uh, it's a, it's actually, so it's a doctor of music <laughs> and, um, and he doesn't know his name. And no one knows his name really, so they're like Doctor Who, and then he is just playing, uh, playing like the bongos on. Uh, oh, beats. on It's like the what, what was the N sixty four the bongo game? Yeah, DK Donkey, 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 Donkey Kong. Yeah, he, so he's Kong, playing yeah. that, and he's just just whooping the game. Da. He's like speed running it. Boom, boom, clap. Boom, 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 clap. Boom, 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 clap. Clap, 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 clap. <laughs> I'm going full boats on this one because I have no idea. I think this is this is probably some like southern southern backyard wrestler who's like got a Doctor Who theme, <laughs> or a do- not a Doctor Who, the Doctor Seuss theme. <laughs> Dr. He, comes, Seuss. he comes to the ring. He's like, he's <laughs> Doc Doctor Who eats some grass. <laughs> Doctor Who drinks sassafras. <laughs> Doctor Who going to beat your ass. <laughs> now get over here. <laughs> I may be white and fat, <laughs> but I'm going to plant you into the mat. <laughs> I wonder who he'll, whose ass I'll beat. I wonder if it will be with this seat. <laughs> Just I metal chair to the street. <laughs> metal chair to the floor. I shall not see any defeat. <laughs> I wish it was that <laughs> because we should just get somebody. We should pay a, an amateur wrestler to try to get into like a, am, a like a, you know, independent tour as like the doctor see us because <laughs> probably Seuss is trademarked. Uh, no, guys, uh, you were both wrong, unfortunately, but <laughs> essentially dude gets lit up in Russian phone booth boxing match. <laughs> There's a new <laughs> phone booth. There's a new extreme <laughs> like sport coming out of Russia where they lock two dudes in one of those red phone booths. Yes. This is hilarious. And it's just MMA in a phone booth with two people. That is the greatest thing oh my ever. God. It's funny because the the ref is like looking and like what are you gonna do? He's like yeah. jumping around. What do you what are you gonna do? Stick your arm in there and get it like just yeah. snapped hey, in whoa, half? Hey, whoa, hey, hey. whoa. <laughs> Dude, I'd, if you I'd pay for that, over you gotta Conor watch McGregor. this video because yeah. they put a GoPro yeah. just in the ceiling, pointing straight down, and that's the best angle because the one guy's head is just constantly hitting the yeah. side oh, man. of the freaking phone booth. What I'm astonished by is that I'm just gonna say my ghost, my guess was way closer than I thought. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, you yeah, got yeah. into the ring. You got into the ring. Yeah, just the ring was a lot smaller. <laughs> this is awesome. Uh, this the, is my, I'm watching. This is my problem with like oh. MMA stuff is that. They just keep beating on people that are like knocked down. That's why I'm, I prefer boxing. It's more of a gentleman's uh, bludgeoning competition. Like someone goes down, you stop punching. Sure. But MMA, it's like they just keep going until the, someone steps in. Well, that's why the the original, the first, the very first MMA fight is the best because this guy gets this dude in this crazy, like arm lock bar where like he's got his arms up against his chest mm-hmm. and he's got his other arms like with his legs and so his opponent oh. is just like. <laughs> Jesus Christ, like in his grasp, and he he grabs his arm and with his elbow, yeah, just starts like destroying his head with his elbow because he's just totally pinned. Yeah, it's great if you ever have, if you haven't seen it. But look, the funny thing is about this phone booth fighting, right? <laughs> the the craziest and funniest part is they start fate just like literally butt to butt cheek. Yeah, 
like like touch it like there. touch butts yeah touch butts <laughs> touch butts and then they just probably ring they ring the bell and they turn around really fast yeah my move every like for the first fight ever I just drop down Duck. and just like throw my head back into his nuts yeah. it's just like <laughs> wow <laughs> this one the dude that lost like he's just getting pummeled like his legs go to jello for like yeah. a second and he's just getting pounded in the face he stands yeah. back up yeah. and just still getting beat <laughs> dude this is just the most unreasonable thing i've ever the guy seen. was just speed bagging him <laughs> <laughs> it's just <laughs> it's really it's really just how <laughs> Like how much beating can you take? How many can in thirty seconds? Yeah, how many That's concussions really can you sustain in a short period of time? Because neither guy is miss like missing. Mm-hmm. You know, like you, you, every shot is landing in some way. Um, it's the most efficient MMA fighting you're gonna see. Yeah, no, the guy that lost, like he, I don't think he knows where he is. I think he's <laughs> he's ready for school. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Doctor Who, <laughs> Doctor Me, <laughs> me go to doctor now. <laughs> Yeah, so there you go. Doctor Who beats ass. It's going to be all the rage in uh, freaking England. Um, probably more over here. Uh, all right, here we go. Another one. Special crime scene delivery. Oh, I got this one. Okay. This one. So it's crime scene. There was um, a stabbing, and someone comes with a delivery of knives, and then they just trip and throw all the knives everywhere. Now the crime scene, they're like, oh, no, look at all these knives. Uh, how can we ever tell which one was the real one? And then the There's you know, one guy. DNA. And everyone's like, no, no, no. Shush, shush. Process knives. of elimination. Remember everything you can about the knife that you're holding. Yeah. <laughs> black handle. 30 knives of black handles. <laughs> it was sharp. 30 knives that are sharp. <laughs> I think that's spot on. <laughs> Can't miss with that guess. I, I'm just saying the pizza guy stumbled in way too early. <laughs> you know, he, the, the cops get called because there was a scuffle at your neighbor's house. And homeboy knocks on the door because, you know, I mean, it's buy one, get one at, at Papa John's. And he shows up there and he's like, he's like, hey, man, you forgot your pizza, man. I, I'm going to put it inside because, you know, he's going to get cold. And he walks in. The cop's like, freeze, get out of the ground. Put the pizza on the floor. That's a, and the guy, oh. like, pulls the pizza box off his crotch and is like, oh, you guys aren't shooting a cop porno? <laughs> oh, this isn't the theme part. No. Oh, I got a guess. A real he's one. He's got another guess. No. So, yeah, it was pizza delivery. So the there was a you know husband and wife. One of them ordered a pizza and then, you know, placed the call. Like, all right, we'll be there in an hour or whatever. And then the husband's like, I told you I didn't want pepperoni. I want a sausage. And then he ends up killing her. You know, neighbors over here, they call the police. Police show up, crime scene. <laughs> and then the pizza shows up. <laughs> and then they ask him, like, what's the last thing you remember, uh, you know, this woman saying to you? And he's like, definitely want pepperoni. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <that's> adamant. <laughs> adamant about pepperoni. pepperoni. Um, okay. Well, just uh, any any more guesses if I give you a hint? This is this. We covered this in episode 65. What? Any Uh-oh. anybody without googling? I I remember all of our episodes. Yeah, yeah okay. all of them. All right, Luke I'll just give it, it to you. Yeah. I'll give it to you. Food delivery robot oh. DGAF about active crime scene. So <laughs> what? <laughs> what did we he talk about? Doesn't give a damn. <laughs> doesn't about give anything. a damn. Yeah. So DGAD. This the, oh, the little cocoa robots yeah. we talked about in LA. They're just rolling around making food deliveries. There's this <laughs> giant. It's in LA. This giant crime scene. This is completely taped off. Yeah. And this little robot rolls up and is just like, <laughs> I, I have to get through there. Yeah. This is the fastest route to deliver this this Indian like curry sauce. Yeah. And I gotta go now. Detect, Detective Luke, what do you what do you think the the body? What do you think happened? What, Whoa! It rolls right over the face of this person. <laughs> the greatest part of this is that the guys, there's like three or four camera guys from the local news covering it. Just and the one guy immediately just pans his camera down <laughs> to the robot. It's like this is gonna be the most interesting part of the story. And then the other guy raises the crime scene tape. The other journalist <laughs> raises the crime scene tape. 
And the robot just rolls through about 30 police officers. <laughs> Wait, stop that robot! Yeah, stop that robot! <laughs> I bet that whoever committed the crime, they're like, okay, where am I? Okay, I'm over here. I need it. I need this from CC's Pizza. So they'll, they'll, they'll bring the robot through. <laughs> the guy runs out of the bushes and hops onto the robot. And it's just like... <laughs> it's a perfect crime. They, they just roll it away on the robot. <laughs> Hi ho silver! <laughs> Hi ho silverware! Mm. Yeah. <laughs> the the robot did not care. It had to get the delivery done, man. Thirty minutes or less, <laughs> or it's free. He and he's he's sitting there really trying to figure out. Uh, uh, can I go across? <laughs> oh man, that that was great. Um, little Coco robot, don't give a damn. He's just pulling the construction <laughs> tape or not yeah. caution tape, not construction. Yeah. <laughs> Just pulling a Todd, Todd, Todd. <laughs> like 30 cops are just like looking at this, like three dead bodies that just brutally murdered. And like one junior cop's like puking. He's like, <laughs> and they're just like, then there's like Benny the cop like over there, like, oh, hey, my Indian food just got here. <laughs> the cop starts puking. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, anybody want to share this? None. <laughs> Came with free masala, dude. <laughs> Man, where's my goat cheese, man? No falafel. <laughs> Send it back. <laughs> Look, okay, robot goes, goes right back to robot. It. No tip. <laughs> Runs over his toes. All right, all right, all right, all right. We we got a couple more. Two more. Two more. Papa, he isn't. Um, is the name of this headline? Say it again. Papa, Papa, he isn't. Okay. Popeye. Pa- like Popeye. Yeah, like the sailor man. Yeah, Popeye the sailor man. Hmm. Well, I'm just, it's someone who uh, just hates spinach and they have very tiny forearms, but very, <laughs> he's, he's like the opposite Popeye. He eats kale and has huge biceps, but tiny forearms. Okay. <laughs> Could this be about Amar? One arm Baba? Oh. <laughs> One arm Baba. <laughs> no, Amar, you're not, you're not playing a new Popeye dog. <laughs> that guy's a real life Popeye. <laughs> <laughs> who wants to be Popeye in our play? Amar, no, we already told you last year, you know, you, you could be the coat hanger. <laughs> the coat rack. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> okay. What's your guess? That's it. <laughs> That's it. That's it. It's breaking it. Amar's heart year <laughs> yeah. after year. That's his only life goal yeah. is to be Popeye in the play. <laughs> he wants to be it so bad. He just keeps it up there just in case somebody like, in case they need an understudy. All right. Nope. Nope. Um, guy humiliates himself with weakest punch ever. You know, those punching machines where they like measure your punch. Oh yeah. This dude in this like suit, like this white, like nice shirt. And he's like all slicked back hair. Like there's a bunch of ladies around. They're at a big public event or something. He's like looking at the guy and he's like, you getting this, you getting this, like, you know, like you getting this for the YouTubes. They don't do the YouTubes. Anyway. <laughs> the TikToks. World star. <laughs> And then he just like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. He, he, he like winds up and he hits it and it just goes, bing, one. Oh, man. <laughs> one, one, <laughs> one PSI. He looks, he looks back at the camera like, oh, yeah, dude. I, oh, I, he's rolling I, up I the sleeves. He I immediately pushes the reset button. He's like, ah. <laughs> oh, dang. That, that was, it was a glancing blow. Yeah, man. He took his eye off the bag. <laughs> how do you even, how is it even possible for one to move it? <laughs> like. It's, you don't think that one pound of pressure would get that <laughs> arm to go up. The machine's like, this guy, this, yeah. this, look at this guy. This guy needs to be knocked down a peg. Yeah. <laughs> Pulls the bag up as he like swings up. <laughs> yeah, it's like uh, what, uh, uh, Charlie Brown almost <laughs> yeah. moves a football. Yeah. Whoop. Yeah, he goes crashing into the machine. <laughs> if you don't go for the bag, you get the nuts. <laughs> as we say on the Velocity Cast podcast. That's what they say. Um. <laughs> That was really it. That was pretty straightforward. <laughs> Not much there. Those things are harder than they look. I'd like to see like a real MMA fighter do it. Um, and then finally, we're just going to go to the last headline here. Okay. Um, I don't, uh, this should be something different. It should mm. be perf- perfume de influencer. Oh, is this uh, is this the the girl with the bath yeah, water? You went right where I was thinking. Yeah, like you day toilet, but you. yeah, <laughs> this is bath water girl that's bath selling, water girl. selling her bath water as perfume. she shifted over from farts to bath water. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm. She's all about that. She's putting in bottles and guys are just spritzing on them in, yeah. the, in the club. They're, mm. Yeah, they're doing some 
Some neck rubs. Mm. Yeah, man. It's Florence Pugh, man. <laughs> <laughs> a little, little uh, breath refresher. Mm. <laughs> Delicious. Oh, Good Lord. <laughs> Just get away from that as fast as possible. <laughs> oh, that's nasty. <laughs> <laughs> Jeremy Fragrance is the internet's first fragrance influencer. This guy, I, I thought, I thought I was gonna read, like, do this story, include it in our clickbait headlines, and just be like, "Look at this idiot! Look at this guy! He's so stupid!" And I'm watching, I'm watching his videos. You, you can't really see him in this clip uh, in the in the article, but you can catch him on YouTube. This guy is like a charismatic genius. Is he? He just he's always dressed in white. It seems like. And he just has like a huge rack of perfume behind him, and he's constantly just mm. orchid, orange peel, <laughs> orangutans, oregano, orange. <laughs> this smells Dang. like orange. Who watches this? Like, I think everybody at 1.7 million people do. You can't even smell like that is the most useless. He should start like, shipping some, scratch and sniffs. Can this become a chest hair? Because like I'm, I'm gonna <laughs> yeah. put my taco meat. I'm gonna here. take care of this right now. Yeah, dude. He's a, he's got 5.2 million followers on the TikTok. 1.7 subs on YouTube. Wait, Damn. so he's making like rhymes with it? So you're saying like he's like orange? I'm joking. Like he actually oh. breaks it down. He's actually a uh, like an actual. Olfactory, yeah. Olfactory. Like we could, I know some guys that could use him for smelling some socks. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Moisture wicking. There you yeah. go. Pair them together. Yeah, pair. I get it. Pair of socks. <laughs> yeah. Pair them together. Affiliate links. We need yep. affiliate links for this. <laughs> uh, no, but if you check this guy out, he's 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 a pretty cool entrepreneur. I, I give him credit for trying to tackle like an almost impossible thing to do with uh, internet video, where yeah. people are going to trust your opinion on a fragrance. You know, it's the closest we get to smell a vision. Smell a vision. <laughs> yeah. Someday there's just going to be a webcam and next to it a little hole in your computer that's just like synthesizing perfumes. Yeah. It takes the molecular like thing and then, okay, add these and then just, yeah, artificially. Uh, it's like in cartridges, just like runs yeah. out of like <laughs> the, the purple <laughs> fragrance and it just like everything smells like crap. I'm all out of purple. Oh, man. Epson. We got to get our Epson refill. <laughs> get our Epson subscription, man. Yeah. I'm not mad at him for doing this. I'm mad at the five million people for watching it. <laughs> I'm with you, dude. Yeah. For anyone who wants to do anything, why? Go, do what go, you want. To, go to a Macy's. Like, come on. <laughs> Keep those ladies in work. Come on. They got college tuition to pay for. Um, you know what? They not for them. For their kids. You know who should do that is like Eminem. Eminem should be like doing the smells. Be like, holy shit! It smells like a good fragrance. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what this is gonna take us, and maybe. I don't know what's it's, it's going to smell like lakes in. <laughs> Where's the next one? I'm losing patience. It smells like an orange. You put this orange in some porridge. <laughs> he did it. He did the impossible. Nice. He just rhymed with orange. That's, Holy shit. That's Eminem for you. <laughs> or Andy Samberg. Oh. Just, just. <laughs> Andy Samberg. I'm so impressed by this fragrance. <laughs> I was just a vagrant before I got here, but now I'm rapping with Snoop Dogg. <laughs> <laughs> Corona, uh, anyone? <laughs> I know. We're running out of raps like I know you're running out of grandmas. <laughs> or maybe you ran out of grandmas a long time ago, just like you ran out of raps for orange a long time. Or rhymes, excuse me. Uh, but it hurts. It's that special love that only a grandma can give you. It's all gone. And the only flow that uh, rhymes can give you, all gone too. But maybe you're one of the lucky ones who still has grandmas and rhymes. Well, screw you, man. I mean... I mean, lucky for you, we're seriously so happy for you. But if you wouldn't mind sharing your grandma or your rhymes with those who are less fortunate and have run out of rhymes or grandmas, please consider having, uh, more specifically for this one, your grandma send an application to Grandmas for People in Pajamas. We're always looking for new grandmas, you know, because a lot of our employees are dying, very, dying very fairly frequently. They're dying. They're dying. Okay. Our grandmas are dying. All right. I'm sorry it's happening, but it's not because of our working conditions. No, no, no. It's, uh, it's just, they get old, okay? And anywho, um, here at Grandma's for People in Pajamas, Grandma's will come in early in the morning, make you breakfast, pinch your cheeks, lick their thumb, and wipe the schmutz right off your face. Grandma's at Grandma's for People in Pajamas. Do it all. Use code VCPOD70 for a seven-day trial grandma from Grandma's for People in Pajamas. And Grandma's, don't forget to apply, and please refer any friends if they haven't already fully retired uh, to come work. At Grandma's for People in Pajamas, this is not an actual product, service, or idea. Just in case you thought it was, it's not. If there is something out there with the same name, we are unaware, have no affiliation, offer no judgment on the actual product, service, or idea. That rhymed. 
Grandmas and pajamas, man. Oh yeah, dude, just wrap that fresh to the top. Here we go. Grandmas, pajamas, bananas. That's about it. <laughs> <laughs> we'll work on that one. Send it over to Eminem. All right, guys, we're gonna do a new seg- or we're gonna do another segment that we have done before. It's not a new one. A lot of you will be familiar. A lot of you will be familiar with it. For those of you who aren't. This is what do you think it means? Where we take a word, we explore it, the etymology. We are amateur etymologists here at the Velocity Cast podcast. We've been learning a lot uh, and um, adopting a lot of flox and nox and not hill pification words. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and, We're uh, on the Velocity Chaos palaver over here. Yeah, dude. <laughs> we got to <laughs> keep going. Uh, just, you know, 50 minutes, that's where we got to get to. Um, no, I have a word for you guys this week. It's a fun one. It's a little crazy, but uh, we're it's gonna we're gonna explore it. It's gonna it's, it's a watershed word because we're gonna get into a lot of what do you think it means. Not just this one, but we'll start with one. Okay, ready? Firkin. Mm-hmm. It's uh it's an offshoot. It's a <laughs> slang word for a, a very common word that people use. It's one of the seven uh, words that you can't say on television, uh, but are allowed but, to say it on podcasts. But, yeah, we're allowed to say it on podcasts. Uh, but it's uh, you know, it's it's safe. It's safe. It's kid friendly. You can say ah, oh, firkin. It's it's uh, you know, like frick, or you know, you know what I'm trying to say. It's a it's, swear word derivative. Yeah, colloquial term. It's safe. It's a colloquial. Colloquial. Yeah. Colloquialism. Colloquial. <laughs> That's just That's, none yeah. of those ones I can't pronounce. <laughs> colloquialism. <laughs> say basket. Basket. <laughs> Breakfast. Breakfast. Uh, so. A firkin, yeah. Um, so you think it's like an insertable? It's like an exclamation. Yeah. Firkin. Yeah. Firkin. All right. Mm, I'm going with like a a firkin's like a miser of sorts, like somebody. But it's also like a, somebody who's a shut in, like a somebody who like kind of stays away in their hobbit hole, but they're also cranky little. Cranky little firkin. Hey, Geyser, <laughs> what the hell's a miser? <laughs> <laughs> miser is somebody who hoards their money oh. in an unpleasant manner. Oh, look at you. Nice. Look at you. Yeah. Tossing around. Miss Shirey's class, the only thing I learned. <laughs> Hope you're tired. <laughs> I'm proud of you, DJ Four Chords. If she was a miser and saved her pennies, she is. Uh, a firkin. So you think basically a co- cousin of a hobbit? Yeah. Going to get in there. Episode six of <laughs> Rings of Power. Mm-hmm. The Firkins are people <laughs> closely related to the Harfoots. Firkin bags. Also, just another word that we made up because we are not allowed to use the word hobbit by contractual obligation. Is that true? Yes. No way. <laughs> yeah. Apparently, they, they spent like a million dollars an episode on the rights or whatever. Yeah. And they didn't get the hobbit. They didn't get the word the hobbit. They had, a hobbit. they had like bedazzled hobbit onto all these trees and stuff. Like, <laughs> yeah. no, we gotta take that set down. <laughs> Sorry. What? What do right. you mean? No green doors? Like, someone just has a meltdown. <laughs> I painted fifty green doors, <laughs> all life size and to scale. <laughs> Firkin. <laughs> yes, Firkin. All right, here we go. Firkin. Apparently from Middle Dutch. Vierdekin. Ah, oh, changed mm. everything. We were close. <laughs> Uh, it was diminutive of veered. Veered or weird? Veered. V i e r d e. Oh, so not like veered, like turned left or right, slightly. Luke is veered. I'm very veered. Right, <laughs> no veered. Would you like to meet my veered friend? <laughs> <laughs> this is Falcon. Falcon. Falcon stock. That's, uh, yeah, that's what I was gonna say. It's a shoe. <laughs> What so was, what was the root? Where was it? It comes from. Dutch. So I, I, I'll walk it back a little bit. Middle um, Dutch. Veered, which is uh, it's a diminutive. Uh, let's start with that. It's Small. fourth or fourth part. This is not helping. Ooh. <laughs> What's a diminutive? <laughs> it just it just means like this word veered means fourth or fourth part, oh. and that that was veerdekeen, which was the Middle Dutch word, mm. which uh, firkin comes from. Firkin, uh, it's like of friends. It's a friend. It's like fourth. Of fourth the, friend. Fourth of yeah, is my this is my fourth kin. Uh, this is Firkin. That would be a cool. <laughs> that would be a cool word of a friend. The fourth away from you by extension. Yeah, like that word is Firkin. Yeah. It's oh, like, you're my Firkin. Like, yeah. well, this is my friend twice removed yeah, yeah. on uh, my best friend's side. Yeah. So you wouldn't want to say that. So you just yeah. say this is my Firkin. Yeah. 
Yeah. Exactly. Not okay. streamlined. Okay, streamlined. Yeah, I'm just sticking with weird. <laughs> <laughs> it's a weird kid. Means a goofball. Weird kid. <laughs> All right, guys. Look, let's just get into it. Firkin means small cask. Ooh. And it comes from in the Middle Dutch, like it was literally like the fourth part of a barrel. So oh. they chop off the rest of the barrel. The bottom part of it was like a firkin and essentially was like a container. Sometimes they close it up, sometimes whatever. It eventually turned into like a, like a unit of measurement for big barrels. Oh. And like I discovered a whole English wine cask units. So these are all words that describe different amounts of like different size barrels and so containers. Not metric nor standard. Oh. This is specific. This is just classic. They're going to oh, laddie, we're having a big party tonight. We need a whole firkin. A whole firkin. <laughs> So a firkin holds about eight gallons. That's Ooh. a lot. So you'd really, I mean, if you're having a big party, you'd probably need a couple firkins. A couple firkins. Okay. If you're having a massive blowout, this is the end of my life, Bilbo Baggins party. Yeah. You need a whole barrel. You're going to need a ton. Metric ton. No, a ton. Oh, one ton. A one ton. One T-U-N. Wow. That is so the biggest T-U-N. unit that I found on this list. 252 gallons. Wow. That's I think one of those big giant things that you see like, in the the wineries that are just like you could walk into it. Was that in Shrek? Probably. When when he knocked the thing off the keg and then got all those. <laughs> That's other it. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so a step down from a ton. We have these. Humans have these. Keg. Keg. <laughs> <laughs> what part of you is a keg? Wait, no, what this, part of you is oh, a keg? I this part, wait, 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 I, what, talking, we had wait, well, well, I got yeah. a keg. Wait, yeah. wait, what part yeah, of you right is here. Uh-huh. Okay, keg. okay. Got that's the six the pack, that's got the, the keg. keg. Okay, okay. Yeah. The word we're looking for is butt. Uh, <laughs> but. uh, same thing. That is a step down. 100, uh, 126 gallons, 477 liters, half a ton. Hmm. Okay. Going down below that. Ankle. <laughs> no. Hmm. We're out of that. Oh, no okay. more no more body parts. <laughs> a puncheon. That guy did not punch you in that bag. No, no, <laughs> he was he was having trouble punching back uh, after he was getting his head bounced off the telephone booth. Right? Yeah, uh, punch in eighty four gallons, three hundred eighteen liters, one third of a ton. Okay, this is a fun one. A hog's head. That's is yeah. that it's a it's a gallon. It's about the size of a hog. No, nope, we're still not down. Oh. We're still not below a firkin actually. Oh. Fir- firkin's eight gallons. Sixty three gallons. Two hundred thirty eight liters, one fourth of a ton. I wonder if you can go into like a a place that has kegs and stuff and be like, ah, take a hog's head of uh, <laughs> of uh, Heineken. <laughs> I did. We got a video of that. I would definitely want to see you do that. And the guy's like, eighty two gallons. You sure? Yeah, I bet or you. Know, that like, if it was a good place, it'd be like, oh, we got you. Ah, uh, yeah. no, I can't. I'm gonna have to make it up with two tierces. <laughs> <laughs> Which is 42 gallons. 42, okay. So he's like, I know it's a little more than you wanted, but uh, you know, I could give you two barrels, which is 32 gallons, but I'll give you a better price for two tierces. Maybe we'll just stick with the four four firkins. Man, give me your butt. <laughs> give give me your butt right now. Yeah. Give me your best butt. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, Nigel! <laughs> <laughs> We have men for this. <laughs> Nigel's just like pushing a ton, like rolling it through the back room, just like his quads and his glutes are just like beef. <laughs> About a quarter off that thing. He breaks open <laughs> bung holes with his glutes. <laughs> All right, we're still not to the firkin. A rundlet. Hmm. Oh, I can get down on a rundlet. Yeah. <laughs> I can polish off a rundlet myself. How many liters is that? Uh, 68 liters. You want to guess how many gallons that is? With conversion. Was it 3.7 or 3.73 or 8 know. with the uh, conversion? Mm. How many did you say? Start playing the Are You Smarter Than a Podcaster yeah. theme. So. <laughs> <laughs> what was the, uh, uh, how many liters did you 68 say? 68 liters. 68 divided by 3. It's like 20. 18. Yeah, 18. yeah, he got it. Wow, okay, that's okay, close. Wow, okay. Wow. Good job. So he's not joking, guys, when he does that. He actually knows what he's talking about. Yeah. Uh, below that, just two gallons below that, just a tiny bit smaller. A Kilderkin. We're at a Kilderkin. We're 16. at a Kilderkin. And then you half that and you get a Firkin. Get a Firkin. Mm-hmm. And then below that, I think I've heard of this one. Uh, a pin. You've heard of a pin? A little pin barrel. A little pin barrel. Okay. Uh-huh. It's like that big. It's four gallons. It's like, yeah, you can put it on the on the bar top. Yeah, they do the... Uh, Heineken personal keg style? Pretty you know, much. Water yeah. cooler, but yeah. uh, beer. We've seen pins. Everyone's seen yeah. a pin before at least one point. Hmm. 
Um, so yeah, guys, that's what a firkin is. Are we feeling a Kilderkin or a firkin? I think Saturday's for the boys. This Saturday we'll do a Velocity Chaos for the boys. So uh, I th- I don't know, man. I think we go all in. Let's go straight get a gallon. I think we go and get that that runlet. Get the runlet. If you want, just really quick, there's a couple other things I found in this really cool article on units of measurement. A barley corn, one third of an inch. Hmm. A pottles. These are 16 gills. There's 16 gills in a pottle or two quarts. If you're pottle deep, you're drunk because you just drank <laughs> two quarts of beer. So, you know, that would be like probably one eighth of a pin or something like that. Uh, oddly, it's also a unit of land area, a pottle, um, a perch, not the fish, uh, but it actually is approximately a perch long, a perch fish long. So it, it does. So it is a fish. Yeah, yeah. It is a fish. This is this one's for you, buddy. Okay. This one's for you. You ready for this? Is it a dinger? <laughs> no, that'd be sweet. <laughs> Bougie decimals. Hey, everyone knows that. That's those are fancy decimals. <laughs> no, it's a wax <laughs> candle. It's like oh. from a specific part of Arabia, and it's actually the light of one candle. Hmm. So like two candles is two bougie decimals. Too bougie. <laughs> too bougie. Too for bougie me. for us. <laughs> and then scruples is actually a real I know it's like a moral, like you have scruples. scruples. You have good scruples. Yeah. Which means you have two grams of something, two good oh. grams of something. Can I trade these scruples for <laughs> bougie candles? Depend- <laughs> Depends. Is it, yeah, what is it? Wax? Silver? What do you got? Two grams of what? Two grams of rocks. And then a hobbit. Apparently, I've heard, I've heard, and I don't know. I still have to go look and see if it's true. Verify it. A unit of volume equal to four pecks. Now, this is just a rabbit hole now. Yeah, we're just going, we're down. going down the hobbit hole. Going down that little hobbit hole. But that's it, guys. So I found a bunch of them, mainly the Firkin. Remember that one. If you're going to remember anything, Firkin, which is eight gallons of something. Eight gallons. That's a good That's a good thing to remember. Firkin of water, Firkin of beer. All right. Don't be a hero, mate. You look after your mates, and your mates will always look after you. Yeah, cheers. All right, all right. Woo woo. We are pulling into the rec. Oh, no. Sorry. Wow. <laughs> Skipping ahead here, guys. Skipping ahead. Woo woo. We are pulling into Australia. We are pulling into Australia. Uh, we are doing Australian news, hence the didgeridoo here. I was so excited to do this one. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I think it was so funny. My, my title and everything, and I jumped the gun and I ruined it. I ruined it. This is like. Nikki Echidna or Axel Echidna, but essentially in this episode of Australian news where we go down under and find a great headline to rip off of, uh, I found one, an Echidna or Echidna sparks mystery after damaging hotel room in a South Wales country pub. What so is an Echidna? They are like the small marsupial with the long nose and giant spikes. They're like an Australian porcupine, Ah, okay. but they're like tougher and more badass and they love rock and roll. So that's why I named him. <laughs> that's why I named this guy Axel Echidna because he's just like yeah. to, just totally trashed a hotel room. And uh, apparently he just he accidentally got in. Um, it was a mystery at first. They like were like, what's with this carpet? It's all torn up. There's dirt all over the floor and There's the beds shit everywhere. <laughs> the, <laughs> the heater was knocked to the floor. The guys who were running this, they they had like no one had stayed in the room before. So they were like, what, what's going on? There were no footprints. We started to try to piece together the puzzle of who trashed our room. This woman said, and then all of a sudden they kneel down and look under the bed. Imagine not finding it. You know, yeah. Axel, like I know what if it is like something totally different like, or some creepy guy yeah. like just under a the meth head. A meth head. <laughs> well, I think this. I think Axel was Axel Kaidna was on a freaking. He's on a bender, man. That's so punk rock. Yeah, yeah. Um, couldn't believe their eyes. I, spe- I guess apparently he just got in and cost over three thousand dollars worth of damage oh. in twenty four hours. This guy could party with the best of them. Oh yeah, Ozzy who? <laughs> I bet this dude eats bats heads <laughs> yeah, yeah. on the regular. Just impales them and saves them for later. Some on of those spikes. flying fox. Oh man, uh, bats. <laughs> They're thinking of renaming this like room the the Akina Suite. Hey, that, and, in honor of our little friend Axel, yeah, yes. Axel Akina. So yeah, man, just be careful if you ever uh, uh, go down to you know 
the the land of the marsupials, echidna. Sorry, echidna. echidna. Uh, no, I said it right the first. I said it half half. I've heard it both ways. Echidna, echidna. <laughs> yeah, the echidna. Some, you know, you say tomato, I say tomato. <laughs> you say tomato, I say echidna. Um, yeah. but it's uh, yeah, Axel echidna. Watch out! Don't party too hard with him, man. You'll end up on the wrong side of the bed. Some people might even say echidna. <laughs> <laughs> echidna. <laughs> If that's you ask a, the Google. That's a different animal. I mean, that just goes to show you that in life, you know, there there's many things that you can derive from from one one uh, one source. There, there's a lot of options that can be seen. You know, many people seeing the same thing can have a, a different story or a different tale to tell. And you know, you can you can get caught up, you know, in a phone booth, punching your way out, and and the only way out is uh, you know, in a body bag sometimes, and. The other other thing is that you wonder, you wonder who who is going to smell the smells if you're not there to smell the smells. That's right. Jeremy can tell you what he smells next week on Jeremy Fragrance telling you what it smells like because if if he's not going to tell you the smells then you got to order it you got to order it and then the robot's going to ship it over to you and there's nothing that's going to stop that robot from shipping it to you because it, it'll jump. It'll it'll pull a Ferris Bueller, jump on a trampoline over some hedges. It'll 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 go through any fog or smog. It's not going to be held down by stuff that our stupid lungs will get caught up in. And it'll it'll be able to magically see because it has a whole city mapped out, you know. And you know, when you really think about it, you know, when you get down to the the barrel of monkeys and you're just like, I just need a firkin of monkeys. And uh, how many is that? I don't know, a quarter of it, eight gallons. You tell me. You, you tell me what we need, and we'll get that all set up for you. Eight gallons of monkeys. <laughs> um, I feel like we've already done this before. <laughs> So we'll just get right Australian into it. Australian news! <laughs> this is our Australian news segment here where we tell you something that, that we like in our life. You know, it's a recommendation station. Uh, you know, whether it's a movie, a book, a music, a lifestyle choice, a, a TV show, uh, a product of sorts, or a place to go, something to experience. This week, what I want to do is Men's Warehouse. Men's Warehouse, uh, you're going to like the way you look. I guarantee it is what the guy says on those commercials. Um, but I've had good luck with them you going in, um, ordering stuff or uh, getting stuff tailored there. You know, it's it's not uh, you don't have that uh, that personal touch. Maybe of some smaller smaller stores. But the thing I like about Men's Warehouse is if they don't have what you're looking for, they are not afraid to be like, oh, actually. Go go to this store over here. I think they have that. Or, you know, go check out this one. I know I've heard that this guy carries that. You know, so if you're looking for something specific, they're not afraid to be helpful. They're not like, oh, well, actually, well, if you give me a second, you know, I'm going to give you... This kind is close enough. Is that... This work... They're not trying to push the sale. They're just trying to be helpful because they know... A lot of times when you're getting a suit or a tuxedo or something something sharp and fancy, you know, you know, for, a, I don't know, prom or whatever or a wedding or... A, you know, whatever a uh, job interview, they're they're just trying to make sure that you're you're looking sharp, and they're gonna do what it takes to get you or send you in the right direction. And the other thing that I like is occasionally, if you check out their clearance section, you can get some pretty good stuff for cheap. Nice. Yeah, that's uh, I got. Does it fit? Well, yeah, you gotta get lucky that it has your okay. size. Okay. You know, um, but yeah. Last year when we were looking at some stuff, I just I stopped in and just checked checked it out and nice. got got a nice extra suit jacket. Like they they tailored it up, like measured me and everything. Oh and wow! Yeah, so uh, whatever tailoring tailoring costs are, but like sure, you know. But it was just nice that you know they're they're helpful. They're very helpful and knowledgeable too. I'm down. Yeah, I'm down to give it a whirl. So yeah, if you're looking for you know a suit or trying to look nice. Check out Men's Warehouse first, and at least the ones that I've gone to. I've, got, I've been to a few different ones, and all of them have been the same as far as, like, being, you know, helpful but not overly aggressive. Nice. Like, and just trying to get you what you want. That helpfulness, man. Yeah. That's sometimes a better sales pitch than uh, strong-arming someone. Yep. Amazing. Well, if you're like Luke, go check out Men's Warehouse. Get, get looking spiffy. 
I'm going to do that next time. Uh, job interview, just tuxedo it up. Straight tuxedo. <laughs> the top hat. Just, yeah. Hello there, sir. <laughs> you will find my resume embroidered and imprinted. <laughs> On this scroll. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> good day. Wait, we didn't even do the interview. <laughs> I said good day. All right, guys. Thanks for joining us on the 84th episode of the Velocity Chaos Podcast. It has been a blast running through these segments with you. We've explored a lot. We've done a lot. Uh, but we are just going to keep on going because that's the nature of the beast. Big wide world out there. And we are going to cover it one segment at a time, whether we like it or not. But we will like it, especially if you're there along with the ride, uh, for the ride. Um, we can't tell you how much we appreciate people who listen to us and uh, interact with us. It means a lot. We're just trying to build a cool story here. So feel free to reach out with ideas, thoughts, and we'll do our best to incorporate them. I want to thank our DJ Four Chords, man, for being on it today. Hey, man, thanks for having me out today. It was a great, great time. Nice. Very good. And uh, yeah, I uh, hope to see you guys on the 85th and beyond. So this is Nick signing off. And this is Luke signing off. Thank you guys all once again. If you have any comments or questions or ideas for topics, hit us up on uh, Instagram, YouTube, or uh, send us an email if you got something deep at velocitychaospodcast at gmail.com. Thank you guys once again. And y- you guys have heard us say this time and time before, maybe once only before. But uh, like we always say, if you don't go for the bag, you get the nuts. Have a good one. Thank you for tuning in to the Velocity Chaos Podcast. We upload new episodes every Monday and Thursday. Be sure to subscribe and rate us on iTunes, Spotify, or your podcast platform of choice. Interact with us on Instagram at Velocity Chaos Pod or on Facebook and YouTube at Velocity Chaos Podcast. We are grateful for your time and hope you enjoyed it here. Please tell a friend and thank you once again.